everybody, it's Jonathan Gorman from iCreative. I wanted to take a moment to thank you so much for attending this session. As always, recordings of the sessions will be available on our YouTube channel along with many other videos. You can access all of our videos for free anytime by heading to our website at www.theicreative.com. From our homepage, there is a helpful link directly to our YouTube channel. I really enjoy doing these classes, and I hope that you learn something new from each of these Zoom sessions of ours. I also want to let you know about some of the other sessions that we have scheduled. I hope to see you in another class, and thank you again so much for joining us today. Well, welcome everybody to today's class. I just want to say thank you so much to Jonathan. Um, we are so excited to be able to give this opportunity to have a chance to learn more about how to use our Apple um, items, our iWatches and our phones. Our team is so grateful that we can say thank you because you do so much for us and we want to be always adding value to you. And our team consists of myself, George, Gloria, Kathy, Christy, Lisa, Maria, and Mona, Nikki, Sherry, Stacy, Suzanne, Tracy, Valerie, and our amazing RVP, um, PJ. So we just say thank you and I hope you benefit a lot from this and Thanks for taking the time to get educated today. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, my name is Jonathan Gorman. And uh, if you haven't attended any of our sessions yet, um, welcome to the session. Today is kind of, uh, is going to be all about um, tips, some tips and tricks, some things that um, everyone might be able to benefit from. And then at the end of the class, we're also going to kind of open it up for a little bit of a lesson on Apple Watch. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I am coming off of uh, being pretty sick the last week and a half. I've got a really horrible cough. Um, so I hope you guys will be able to forgive my voice being so kind of crazy sounding. Um, and so today I may may not go the full two hours. I might just do an hour or something to you know, give everybody else a break as well. Since it is the holiday season, I'm sure that everyone out there has got a lot going on. So uh, first thing, of course, thank you guys so much for always having me. I love doing these sessions and uh, I hope that you've found some value in, in our time together. And uh, hopefully we have a little bit of fun and are able to share some, some tips and tricks that have kind of worked for us as well. Um, I understand that not everybody has an Apple computer. Most of us might have an iPhone, uh, might have an iPad, but may not have an Apple computer. So for that reason, I probably won't be talking too much about the Mac today because that might alienate some of our users. And also I understand that not everybody has an Apple Watch. So if you don't have an Apple Watch and you're not so interested in that, then we're gonna just have the first part of the class kind of be dedicated to some, some, uh, some tips and tricks and some open, open discussion. So I think what I'd like to do is start on the iPhone and uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that I see a lot of people struggling with. And hopefully I'm gonna click on something or uh, hit on something today that is, um, that is new to, to some of us. So see if I can't get my phone to behave itself and show up for us today. Okay. Okay, so can everybody see my screen okay, my iPhone screen? Okay, great. So I am running Apple's latest version of the software. And one of the things that I feel like a lot of people don't use or may not know too much about is called the control center. The control center on all the newer devices that have a face ID, so that's the iPhone 10 and later, you can swipe down from the top right-hand corner and that's gonna reveal something that looks like this. One of the things that I think is very helpful for us music lovers is that in the top right-hand section where it, sees, where it says system on mine, um, this is where you can control music and you can control how music is being shared from this device. If you're a music lover, I really wanna encourage you to download some music to the actual music app, which is on my screen, the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, if you do that, 
and you purchase or download some music directly, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, once you get some content onto the physical phone, then you're not relying on a streaming technology or an internet connection in, in order to be able to enjoy music. So if you have a Mac or PC, and maybe you've got 10 or 20 CDs, remember those CDs? Yeah. Uh, and you imported them into the computer and now in, they're in the music app, which used to be called iTunes. Then if you plug your physical iPhone or iPad into your Mac or PC, you can actually synchronize that content from the computer to the phone. And since so much has changed with music, I'm just going to call that kind of content legacy content. It's content that I purchased or had on CDs or a friend of mine gave me or whatever. I didn't buy it from iTunes. And so now that content is on the physical device. Well, in the case of music, if I go into any of my playlists or if I want to nav navigate by artist or album or anything like that, when I tap on a song, um, there's now going to be this small bar just above the controls. And right beneath that little play triangle, there's a little thing that looks like a speaker. And if I tap on that, this is going to show me wirelessly all of the available places where I can send this music wirelessly. And it's really kind of a, a cool and powerful thing if you love music. And that's how you would share music from the music app itself. But maybe you're often doing other things. The music has been playing for 20 or so minutes. If you swipe down from the top right, now that top right hand corner, you can actually tap where it says system and you can really quickly and easily access where the speaker um, settings are. And you can even adjust the volume and you can play and fast forward as well. So this turns out to be a really handy place for music lovers to go to while they're using uh, their iPhone or their iPad because the experience will be the same. Now, just to the left of this square, you're gonna see the airplane. To the right of that is cellular. If I wanted to turn the cell phone uh, signal off, I can do that here. Wi-Fi is the one that looks like the little Japanese fan or the baseball diamond. And then to the right of that is Bluetooth. So this is where I'm able to kind of control all three of the wireless radios that are built into this iPhone. Now, if I jump onto an airplane and the stewardess is glaring at me because I you know, need to turn on airplane mode, I can just tap on that little airplane and it's gonna wipe out um, the, the, uh, the settings for those three radios. I'm gonna periodically mute myself while I cough because my cough is so terrible. I don't wanna blast everyone's earphones. So please forgive me. The next one is kind of elusive, and a lot of people don't realize about this one, and they're not sh sure how to find value. But just beneath it, that little lock with the arrow going around it is actually the one that we use to lock the screen orientation. Now, if I turn that on, then when I go into a program like Safari and I navigate to, I don't know, a website like Yahoo or something, normally, if I turn my phone sideways like this, my screen would go into a, a landscape view. Well, because I have that lock on, it will not do that. And so if I turn this off and then I go back, let's see if it'll do it. See, there we go. So now it is going in full landscape mode when I turn the phone 90 degrees left to right. Now, what is the opportunity for us to use this? Well. The best example is typically on an iPad. Maybe on iPad, you're reading a book and your iPad orientation for reading that book is in portrait or up and down vertical. And you wanna actually lay on the couch on your side, but you don't want it to shift. If you you know, lay the iPad on its side, of course, it's gonna go and turn on you. And what if you don't want that? Well, clicking on this one button to, to do the lock, the one that I'm just clicking on right now where it turns orange, will lock the orientation vertically. And so now when I turn on my side 90 degrees, it's gonna stay in that orientation so I can read while I'm laying down. To the right of that is this little bell. And that's basically just gonna turn the sound off of this phone and turn off notifications. And it enables sort of a silent mode. 
To the right of that is actually a very important slider. This slider that I'm adjusting right now, I'm gonna encourage you to try to keep that at about halfway down because that's for the brightness of the display. Of course, we all love it when the display is nice and bright, but if you have this about halfway down, you can plan on saving a lot of battery life. So this is a great way to get a little bit more life out of your iPhone's charge each day, uh, just by simply keeping this around half. Where you have a bell, I have two squares. Oh, well, your two squares are probably down where mine are. And so your yours might not look like mine because I have a, a whole series of other of other um, icons on mine. No, my squares are up on top, right below the. Right, right That's next. fine. That not to worry. The function is the same, yeah, you know, regardless of the layout. So my layout's going to probably be a little bit different than yours, and that's okay. Um, so what if I did want to change some of the things that are on my control uh, center? Well, that's for actually very easy to do. If I go into my settings. There's actually a place dedicated just to this. And it's right under general where I can click on control center. And control center allows me to add all kinds of wonderful controls. Things that I'm using are listed right here at the top. And as I scroll down, additional things that I'm able to add are gonna be in green. And so if I click on the green plus for say, ping my watch, then that just got added to the control center. And so now when I swipe down and then I scroll down to the very bottom, that little tiny icon that looks like an Apple watch with the little rays coming off of it has now given me the ability to tap on that and it'll actually make my Apple watch make a sound, which it just did. It's kind of a cool little trick. So I'm gonna encourage everyone to kind of get in and play with these little features. You can hear my watch is now dinging since I asked it to send it a little ping. Um, I find this to be a pretty powerful thing. If anyone here has an Apple TV, the Apple TV remote app is the one that looks like this. It looks like an Apple TV remote. It's the one that looks, it's the icon just above my little alarm clock there. And that is really handy because if I click on that, that's gonna take me to this screen. And for those of you that are familiar with an Apple TV remote control, this is kind of an approximation of that in the software. And I can actually tap on the top and we've got all kinds of Apple TVs on all of our displays here at iCreative. So the break room uh, in my office, the music studio reception, these are all Apple TVs that are in our offices. Now, if I was at home, I would probably have one in the great room or the living room. I'd have one in the master bed and maybe one in the guest bedroom. Well, I can just tap on any of these and I can control the Apple TV without having to dig around and find the remote. The remotes look like this. They're kind of small. And so maybe this guy got you know lost underneath one of my cushions. And uh, the other added advantage, by the way, of using this is if you are an Apple TV user, I'm hoping that you have downloaded at some point the YouTube app, because then you can go and look at all this wonderful content on YouTube on your big screen TV. Well, if you've ever done this and you're searching for like, you know, Johnny Carson's greatest moments or something, um, typing that out on that interface is kind of a drag. Well, using this app, you're going to get a full blown keyboard and you can type very quickly and do searches. That's very powerful and a really nice thing to know about. So the control center has access to things all obviously like the flashlight. So by tapping on the flashlight icon, you'll see that my phone's flashlight has just turned on. I can really quickly get to the camera app if I wanted to, just by tapping on the camera icon. Uh, there's a calculator, you know, and so on and so forth. So there's lots of little, you know, tricks and um, functionalities that you can add to control center. Uh, to give it additional value for you personally on this physical device. And then you can, you know, copy some of those same tricks on your next device as well. And I think you'll find some incredible value here. And again, it's just as quick as a, as a quick swipe down. Now, I do have one security trick that I do think is kind of worth mentioning here. If you want to, um, 
you can disable control center from the lock screen. And that's going to prevent a bad guy if he steals your phone from being able to quickly turn off, you know, because if you if you lock your phone and your and your lock screen looks like mine does right now, if a guy steals your phone, he's the first thing he's going to want to do is swipe down from the top and turn on airplane mode so that you can't very easily track the phone. Well, you can actually make it difficult for that person to enable uh, the control center from the lock screen. And that might be a great way to make it just a little bit harder for him to, uh, to steal your phone. So to do that, um, we're going to go to, God, now I got to remember where it is. Under control center. Um, if you do a search in the settings for control, you can click on access within apps. And one of them, oh wait, hold on. I think I'm in the wrong place. I have to figure this out. I'm sorry. Um, that is found. I'm going to have to think about that for a second. I can't believe I'm spacing on this. I'm sorry. My brain is not quite what it usually is. I think it's under uh, face ID and passcode. Um, under face ID and passcode, there is now if you have a phone that has touch ID and passcode, um, I think that this feature is still there. But in on my phone, if you go to settings, and then face ID and passcode and scroll. It's pretty far down. It says allow access when locked. Control center is something that you can turn off. And I'm going to recommend that you consider doing that because that way they have to be able to unlock your phone in order to be able to turn off, turn on airplane mode, which allows your phone to be trackable um, even without them being able to turn it off. So that's kind of a nice security uh, tip for the day. So go ahead and turn off control center under face ID and passcode. And the result is that when I'm at the lock screen now, if I'm a bad guy and I just stole this phone, normally I'd be able to swipe down from the top right without having been able to get into the phone without knowing the code. And I could turn off, uh, I could turn on airplane mode, which would hide the phone from being tracked. Well, I don't want that. I want to be able to track my phone if someone steals it. So that's just a little tip on that as well. Now, while we're on this lock screen, I haven't showed up my face. I haven't punched in my code. And so this is the screen that I see when my phone is locked. Well, at the very bottom there, there's actually a shortcut to the flashlight. And I can just hard press on that icon. And really quickly, on anybody's iPhone, I could pick it up and I could be able to turn on the flashlight. So if you're hanging out with your kids and your phone is in the other room and you just need to get behind the television and you know worry about some cords or something, you can just hard press on that button and enable the flashlight really quickly. Now, Danielle and I were driving to get a sandwich the other day. She's driving, I'm in the shotgun, and suddenly we see these elephants flying across the road and they had you know balloons in their mouth and everything and I thought oh my god I can't believe what I'm seeing I need to really get access to my camera and see this instantly so from the lock screen I can just hard press on the camera icon and without even having to get and unlock my phone it unlocks takes me right to the camera app and I can just take a photo right there so the lock screen has these two very powerful controls being able to enable the flashlight and really quickly and easily being able to get to the camera to access uh, anything in a really, really quick moment. So I don't have to unlock my phone, navigate to the page where I have my camera, go find the camera, launch the camera app. No, I can just access it right from the lock screen. Okay. So the next thing that I'd like to talk about I've got a few tips for those of us that might be doing any traveling and you might be going out of the country or you might just be, you know, hanging out in the United States. But there's a couple of things that I think are worth talking about and sharing when it comes to travel. If you are going to be going internationally, well, the first concern when it comes to our technology is what am I going to do about my cell phone? Well, in my case, I'm on Verizon. 
I give, I think, I think there's some monthly subscription if you travel with any regularity internationally. Um, that Verizon has like a travel pass kind of product. I'm I'm pretty sure they do. If we are just going to jump over to Europe for a couple of weeks, they have a travel pass that I think is about $10 per day. And the habit that I've made before I go on the road, because I do travel internationally quite a bit, is that I'll call them and I'll ask them, hey, I'm going to be going to this country, this country, and this country. Um, what's the best plan for me to be on? How should I go about this? The nice thing is that the Verizon um, uh, service does work in you know every country in Europe that I've been to, which is pretty much all of them. And, and that's kind of nice. And when I jump from one country to the next, uh, the minute that I land in that country, I'm going to get a text message that says, you know, welcome to the Czech Republic or welcome to Germany. Your travel pass has kicked in. Uh, usually what happens is the travel, pla the travel pass plan, um, regardless of carrier, is pretty much going to be talking about two things, voice and data. So how much data am I going to be allotted uh, per day? And then how many minutes am I going to be given uh, in my international plan? So regardless of who your carrier is, it's never going to be a fantastic deal to talk on the phone phone, you know, my cell phone calling, uh, you know, a friend back here in the States using the cell phone towers in Europe or Scandinavia or wherever I happen to be. That's always going to be your most expensive option. Just picking up the phone, going to your contacts and dialing somebody long distance using the cell phone towers can be very expensive. Many of us, you know, will notice on my front page, I've got, you know, WhatsApp and everyone in Europe uses WhatsApp. Uh, and actually, you know, in um, in the Southeast Asia and in Japan, uh, they use an app called Line, but many of them are also using WhatsApp. And these are really important apps to know about because all of the voice calling that you're doing through them is 100% free, provided that you have a way to connect physically. So remember that iPhones can connect physically in one of two ways, either over Wi-Fi or over cellular. If I have a Verizon plan and I travel internationally, the minute that I land, let's say in Austria, the minute that I land and I turn my phone back on, if I have a, an international plan, my phone will instantly go and look for the closest cell phone tower in Austria to join onto. And then in that moment, my phone and that cell phone tower are communicating and all of the data and the voice uh, communication between this physical phone and their cell tower is being counted. It's being, you know, tracked. It's it's a hundred percent like a little tiny beans going back and forth from my phone to that cell phone tower, and they're counting every last little one. So, if I make a phone call, well, of course, those are being clocked in terms of minutes. And if I am checking my email or I jump on an, uh, a web page or I'm opening the Maps app, or I'm looking at Facebook or Instagram, that data, when it leaves my phone and goes up to the cell phone tower and the cell phone tower brings data back to my phone, just imagine that those are little beans going back and forth from the tower to this device. Well, those are being counted and that's how you know they measure data. If I'm given um, one gigabyte worth of data per day, some of these apps that I'm running might be using data in the background. Like as an example, the Maps app is constantly updating my location. It's trying to give me you know, useful information. And there's this constant conversation happening between the cell phone tower and this device. Well, I'm constantly chewing through my data plan as this occurs. And so what may happen is at the end of the day, they might say, hey, you've gone over one gigabyte. And so now we are going to throttle your um, your data plan in such a way that it's going to be very, very slow. We're still going to be able to allow you to connect, but it's going to be very slow because you've used so much data. Or you can give us another $10 and we'll make it fast again. So this is kind of a way that they get you. And it's it's pretty annoying uh, for, for most of us. And 
but you know, I will really encourage you to consider getting some kind of a cellular plan when you travel, because then every single photo that you take, if you have location services turned on, will track the location. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, if I go into the photos app on my phone, and if I get to the photos app on my phone, I've got a few places at the bottom. I've got library, I've got for you, and then I've got albums. And if I scroll down under albums, you're gonna notice that there's a section that's called places. And if I tap on that, it's literally gonna show me on a map of the world where I have taken photos. And I've found in my travels this to be really, really helpful because if I'm like, oh, where was that one place that I really had great um, carbonara in Rome? I can just start to zoom in and all of my visits to Rome, it's going to start to propagate as I zoom in further where photos were physically taken. And if I just keep zooming, hey, what do you know? There's a really beautiful plate of food, and I can see exactly on a map, uh, very, very close, that that is where I took that photo. So when I travel, I've found the ability to kind of uh, geo stamp my photos as I go to be extremely important to me because, you know, when you travel a lot and you're seeing a million sites as you as you cruise around the world, some days you're tired and you forget where you saw a certain thing, and so. I've the ability to go back later and use that function I've found to be incredibly valuable. But let's say that what I'm really interested in doing is calling my friends back home. I'm interested in talking to mom and dad. I wanna check in with them and tell them that today I, I had a better bowl of pasta than they did. And uh, I'm gonna be going to the Vatican in the next 10 minutes. And what are you doing today? That kind of thing. Well. I can call call uh, and I can use the cell phone towers, but what is obviously more beneficial to me, if I have a cell phone connection to this physical device, I'm not in a hotel, I am nowhere near Wi-Fi at all, I'm still not gonna dial them, dial them. I'm gonna try to use WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a free app that I can uh, use. I will need to add my recipients as WhatsApp friends but once I've done that once, it's it's in there. So I would encourage you before you travel internationally for sure to you know add the five or 10 people that you know that you wanna call with some regularity to WhatsApp. And then you can call them for free as long as you have some kind of a, a connection. So the point I hear that I'm trying to make is that if I get some kind of a cell phone uh, plan when I travel internationally and I'm nowhere near Wi-Fi, and I use something like WhatsApp um, or even Skype to communicate, I'm not actually using that. I'm not using the, the cell phone towers to make that call and I'm gonna save a lot of money. But there's one that I think is really important to point out that I don't think a lot of people think about and that's actually FaceTime. And normally when we think about FaceTime, we think about doing a FaceTime call. But here's a really great pro tip that I use constantly when I travel. Even if I'm nowhere near Wi-Fi and I have some kind of a cell phone connection, I'm gonna use data to make my calls instead of using the phone app to make a normal cell phone call. And if I go into my contacts and I look at pretty much anyone in my contacts, uh, I'm just gonna do a random search. Well, let's just use the name Paul. Uh, so if I click on, uh, I don't know, Paul McGuire, uh, he's not a good example, um, Paul Abrego, this person has an Apple device because when I go to this person's contact information, I see FaceTime. And when I see FaceTime, I see the, the video camera to the right of the word FaceTime, but I also see a phone phone. And so... If I'm out and about, I'm walking on the streets of Rome and my phone has a cell phone uh, connection, I'm trying to be really you know, frugal with my data plan and frugal with my minutes. 
if I use this option, it is going to use their cell phone towers for data, but I can talk to this person for a fraction of the price using FaceTime audio. And so I'm not, I'm not interested in doing a voice uh, um, call that has video as well. I just want to make a, like a telephone, telephone voice call only. That's when I'm just going to tap on the phone icon. And that's going to be the same thing as me ultimately calling him. So I just wanted to kind of offer that as a great way for you to save a lot of time, save a lot of money for sure when you travel and use FaceTime audio. And uh, I'll encourage you to try to get um, some sort of a cell phone connection on your phone before you hit the road. Another thing that's really interesting that I also don't find that many people have been um, told, excuse me, is that iPhone 12 and later uh, supports not only 5G technologies, but they also have two SIM cards built in. There's a removable SIM card in the iPhone 12 and 13. In the iPhone 14 and 15, there's no more removable SIM card at all. So that's kind of a little bit awkward for those of us that are used to going to a foreign country and getting a foreign SIM card and punching it in and walking out the door and then having like a local, you know, cell phone and cell phone number in Thailand. Well, you can't do that with the iPhone 14s and 15s. Unfortunately, there's no more removable SIM. However, this physical iPhone, which is an iPhone 15 Pro Max, has two built-in eSIM cards, which means that this physical phone can actually have two physical cell phone numbers built into it. And so I can have my American number programmed into it, and then I can also have a work number. So maybe you've got a cell phone number that you want to give to your clients. You don't want to give them your personal one. Modern iPhones can have two phone numbers built into them. If you didn't know that, I just figured I would mention that. Okay. I think that there's a little bit of um, mystery when it comes to managing all of these apps on the screens of an iPhone and an iPad. And so typically, you know, because there's all these wonderful apps out there that we can download for the iPhone and an iPad, uh, we kind of like to jump in and experiment. And then the next thing you know, you find that you've got, you know, three, four, five, six pages worth of apps. And finding apps can be a little bit of a challenge. So for those of you that aren't using this first tip, I think that this could be a real game changer for you. Number one, from any home screen on an iPhone or an iPad, if you just pull down from the center, you're going to get search. And search looks just like this. And so if I was looking for, I don't know, the uh, Facebook app, I can just start typing FA and three letters in, it knows exactly where that app is. And so regardless of where on my phone, you know, because maybe I'm cruising around, I just can't see it. I don't know where it is, what's going on. Uh, where did that app go? Well, searching for it is the easiest way to get there. I mean, searching is simply a pull down from the center and then starting to tap on, uh, starting to tap on the name of the app. But if you didn't know it, that's also a really quick way to get to a contact or you can even find a song. So if I was looking for Thomas Newman's track called Two Hillcrest, I can just start typing Two Hillcrest. And look at that, four letters in, it already determined exactly what it is. And it even allows me to just hit play right there. And already I'm hearing the song. So that's also really powerful. Using search is simply as easy as pulling down from any home screen. And if I search for a person, um, so let's say I was going to teach a, a class at the Vintage. Oops. It's going to show me things like the, the contact info for them. And if I keep scrolling down, it's going to show me apps for the Vintage as well. And I even have, if I keep scrolling down, it's going to show me all of the uh, classes that I'm teaching at the Vintage coming up in January. So all I've done is typed a couple of letters and it finds apps that qualify, songs that qualify, people in my contacts that qualify, and in this case, also calendar items that meet that description. So the search is extremely powerful 
It's called Spotlight Search, and I think it does a really great job of being very helpful. Now, I want to go back to talking about apps for a second. Let's say that um, I wanted to make a new folder. Well, a folder is simply a little container that I can put a couple of apps in. You'll notice that I've got one on the screen that says finance, and there's nine little icons in it. You can actually put more than nine apps into a folder, but I don't recommend this because then they're going to be hidden behind this initial screen. I think that you, you should only put in nine on an iPhone. I think the iPad can fit 12. Um, it does quite a few more, but the apps are really kind of small, small in this format and kind of hard to see. So how do I go about doing that? I'm going to tap and hold on any app. And from this little pop-up menu, I can either remove this app or I can choose edit home screen. When I click on edit home screen, the apps jiggle. And now if I drag files on top of IMDB, and then I wait for a second, it makes automatically a new folder. And the folder it calls productivity because that's how uh, these apps are called in the app store. But I don't really wanna use that name. I'm just gonna call this miscellaneous. And I just hit the little X to wipe out that text. And I click on miscellaneous. And now I can swipe up from the bottom to save my changes and tap outside of it. And now I've got two apps inside of a folder. I know that most of us are probably pretty comfortable doing this, but I do like to go over some of these things because uh, I think that they're important things to really master. However, the reason why I have created a space on page one is because I wanted to, to show us a feature that I think is incredibly useful that many of us have no idea that this is possible. And this is one of those tips that I love showing people because I too am driven kind of mad by managing apps on screens. It's kind of squirrely dragging an app from one screen to the next, finding an app what I want to. And now that I know that searching and finding an app on my phone, even if I can't easily see it, it doesn't mean that the app is not there. And so I'm going to do a search for um, the Facebook app. And I would like the Facebook app to go on page one. So here's a really great tip if you didn't know it. I'm gonna pull down and do my search and I'm gonna start typing Facebook. Now I've found the app at the top. Most of us would just tap on the app and it opens and then we're happy. But I don't wanna do just that. I wasn't trying to just find the app. I also wanna put this app on page one where I would really like it to live. So I can kind of you know, get to it a little bit more easily next time. So right from the search, if you didn't know it, you can tap and hold on the Facebook app and just start dragging it down and you can add it right there from the search. This is such an incredible trick and I think that nobody really knows that it's possible. And so I love showing this to people because I think that's kind of a, a squirrely thing managing all these apps in our lives. And sometimes it just gets away from you in such a way that you wanna get it back to page one. Now, in my case, I've got one, two, three, four pages of apps, five pages of apps, and then I get to this thing at the end that's called the app library. Now, I don't typically use the app library. Um, it's kind of a, it's a newer function the last couple of years, but it does show you um, kind of in this grid that, 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 how do you say, organizes them by the kind of uh, app that they are. But what really helps me is knowing that I can control the number of pages of apps. So if I go back to page one and I decide, you know, I'm not really interested in going through all these numbers of pages of apps, what would happen if I just hid some of them so I didn't have to scroll through so many? Can I do that? Now what I'm gonna talk about is managing the number of pages of apps. So I'm gonna tap and hold and click on edit home screen. And at the bottom, you're gonna see that I've got the little oval, with these little dots inside of them. And those represent the different pages of apps on this phone. And that's what I'm gonna tap on once. Oh, well, that's kind of weird looking. And what has just happened is I've zoomed out and I'm now looking at every single page of apps. And it turns out that I actually have nine pages of apps on this phone. Well, I'm only really interested in seeing the first two. 
So I'm going to uncheck the one in the middle, and I'm going to uncheck the third one on the right at the top. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of apps are not going to be shown when I click on done top right. And now when I'm done saving these changes, I only have one, two pages of apps or three pages with these last two on the end. And how am I supposed to find those apps? Well, just because I've hidden the pages themselves doesn't mean that the apps have gone away. I can always search for them and they're always going to be there. But now I don't have to look at all those different pages of apps because I'm just choosing to, to only show the two that really matter to me. I don't have to uh, worry that the apps have been uh, deleted or that they're going to be gone forever. It's just all right there waiting for me. So as an example, I'm not able to see the Apple Watch app. And so what happens when I do a search for that? Well, I can pull down and start typing watch. And sure enough, there's the app. And once I do find it, since this is something that is kind of important to me, and apparently it's hiding on some page that I've just hidden, I can just tap and hold on that and drag it out of this interface and drag it onto the third page. And now I've got all three of those there. Now, one last thing I want to talk about is I might have an iPad, and on the iPad, I've got a bunch of apps that I like to use on like page five. And I want to get those onto page four, or I've got a bunch that are on page two, and I want to get them onto page three. Normally, I would do this. I would tap and hold. I would say edit home screen, and I would drag the first app over to the edge. And then I kind of freak out because it advances really fast. And getting the apps from one page to the next is always a little bit scary because you put it to the edge, and then you're like, oh, wait, what was going on here? Oh, this is always a little stressful for everybody. So what if I was trying to get half of these apps from this page onto the second page? You don't have to do it one at a time. When they're in jiggle mode or edit mode like this, start dragging the first one. Now I'm gonna hold my finger on that app. And with one of my other fingers, I'm gonna tap on additional apps. And now I'm basically collecting a half a page of apps in one fell swoop. I've grabbed 11 apps, and now I'm going to drag those over to the edge. And when I let go, I just dragged a whole half of a page of apps in one fell swoop. So that's a really nice trick to know if you just want to get a bunch of these guys out of one page and onto another. Um, that's a trick that I don't think a lot of people know about. And let's say that I wanted to get a lot of these done. Let's see. Let me put a couple of them, tap and hold. Edit home screen, tap on this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And now I've got all 12 of those. And I drag them over and I let go. And just like that, I've been able to move all those apps in one fell swoop. It's pretty handy. So I guess I should open it up for a few questions and then we can jump over uh, to the watch for those of us that are. Um, Thinking about the watch. Oh, actually, no, I need to talk a little bit about Siri. So I personally do not use Siri to create new text message conversations or to add things to the calendar or to make phone calls. But all of those things are possible. And so I can say, hey, and then say her name because I'm not going to do it right this second. Uh, call, you know, Danielle cell phone or call Danielle iPhone. Now, it is going to deliberately refer to how you have that person's phone number in the contacts. So if you have their iPhone labeled as iPhone, that's a really great way for you to make Siri a little bit more intelligent and have your experience be a little less clumsy. I can also say, AS, make an appointment with my dentist next Tuesday at 3 p.m. and it'll add that to the calendar and that can be very helpful and a lot of people you know rely on that function. I've found that for me personally I love using um, this function for asking questions. Conversions is probably my absolute favorite. Now on today's modern iPhones if you tap and hold on the top right button 
that will engage Siri. So if you don't want to say, hey, Siri, then you can just tap on that. See, when I say it, of course, it lights up and it's waiting for me. But if I just tap and hold on the side, what is 2,071 kilometers in miles? The answer is 1,700. Not bad. That is pretty powerful. What is 241 milliliters in fluid ounces? That would be 8.15%. Not bad. So for conversions, this is also really amazing. It's also wonderful for uh, currency. What is $2,478 in Japanese yen? That would be 360,000. That sounds like a lot of money to me. Uh, 360,000 yen, that's a lot. So another nice thing about that is that when it comes to currency, it will also pull from sort of today's value, which is very helpful if you are going to travel and you need to do quick conversions to figure out if you're going to exchange currency in one direction or another is going to be painful or advantageous. So I think that um, there's a lot to be gained from just using the basic function um, to ask questions. That's probably the greatest use. The second greatest use for me is absolutely without fail, asking it what song this is. That is extremely powerful. I, this is kind of embarrassing, but I can absolutely tell you with 100% clarity, because I am a musician, there have been times where I will be in a restaurant or even in a restroom and I'll hear something and I'm like, God, I know this song, what is this? And I will literally tap and hold and say, what song is this? And it'll pull it up. And when I do ask it that question, it will um, it will show it to me in Apple Music. It'll show it to me on other music channels as well. And you know, if you're a Spotify person or a Pandora person, uh, the song, the, at least you'll know the title now and you can go and do a search for it. So um, maybe uh, when we open this up to questions, uh, which we will in just a second, you guys can share some of the, the great uses that you found uh, for Siri. So um, please take a moment to look in the chat because I did offer a little bit of a link to an Apple support article that talks about some of the ways that you can really leverage Siri uh, to your advantage. You can also use it on Apple Watch uh, by tapping and holding on the digital crown, um, which is also very handy as well. So maybe... Let's open it up and see if anybody has any questions so far. Danielle, are you getting any queries from the gang here? I don't see any questions just yet. Okay, awesome. Well, then I'm going to go and start talking a little bit about the Apple Watch today. So... Um, there it goes. Okay. So for those of you that don't have an Apple Watch and you want to jump off the call today, I'm wishing you all a very, very happy holidays. And uh, I hope to see you in a in a class. And thanks so much for, for showing up today. After I show us a few things on Apple Watch, I will open it up to some questions. And uh, and I hope you guys will share any thoughts or, you know, um, anything that you want to do towards the end here. So one thing that I think a lot of people um, get a little bit confused about when it comes to Apple Watch is why do I have an Apple Watch? There's three main functions that I like to share um, with people that are just kind of interested in Apple Watch. The first thing are what I would, what I would call emergency services. I absolutely love helping uh, some of my elderly clients or people that may have had um, had suffered a, a stroke or a nasty fall, or uh, maybe they have dementia or they're, you know, they're in early Alzheimer's and we're kind of terrified that they're going to lose their balance and have a nasty fall. Well, all of the, the newer Apple watches now not only feature fall detection, but they also feature crash detection for both bicycles and automobiles. So if you get yourself into a, 
an accident, your watch will probably know and will uh, ignite some of its um, wonderful emergency capabilities. If you didn't know it, uh, if I were to be wearing my watch and I have a nasty fall, my watch will detect that. And if I don't respond to what the watch is asking me, it's going to say, hey, are you okay? We think that you just had a fall. The watch will buzz. It'll make some noises. And if you are unconscious after you know a very short amount of time, if you don't respond to the watch, it will call emergency services. But when it does this, I'm hoping that you've also got in your contacts set up a couple of emergency contacts because in addition to calling you know 911 it's also going to alert the people that are in your emergency contacts and they will get a text message in real time with a clickable gps location on a map to exactly where the event occurred it's really it's phenomenally done it's really been a great success it's saved a lot of lives already and is very very powerful so I would encourage everyone that might have, um, you know, a parent or a grandparent that's that's uh, that's aging and might be, you know, you might live in the same house as this person, and you know, you're off, you know, cutting carrots for dinner, and they have a nasty spill uh, in the garage. Uh, you can be alerted absolutely instantly, and I think that's an extremely powerful uh, thing to have. Now, of course, they are going to be responsible for wearing the watch. And that is, you know, obviously part of a, you know, their habit. They have to put it on each day and they have to be wearing it. But if they are wearing it, uh, this can be a really incredible thing. So the second function is what I would sort of call notifications and interactions. And what I mean by that is my watch uh, will um, buzz or beep if I have a new text message. I can interact with the watch to look at my new emails. If I'm driving my car and I get a text message or if the phone rings, I can actually answer those things on the Apple Watch itself. And you might have seen a friend or a family member uh, do that. So what I think is, is you know, I'm, I'm not in the habit of returning text messages so much on this little tiny screen. But I am in the habit of looking down at it to see if it's important enough for me to go and look to the phone and return that text message. Another really interesting thing for me to share is that the very, very first Apple Watch that came out, um, I had one and I was outside of my house and I had one of those big, long pool net cleaner things and I was getting you know bugs and debris out of the pool. And my phone was inside the house and a phone call came in and it, and it routed to the watch and I just clicked on it and, and answered the call. Well, I kind of kept, you know, going with the big, you know, pool cleaning thing and my hand, you know, my watch was about as far away as it possibly could have been. As I was having this conversation, I said, Hey, listen, I'm actually just going to, I was talking to one of my good friends. I said, Hey, I'm actually just going to keep cleaning the pool. How does my voice sound right now? They said, you sound perfect. So what I learned is that the microphones in Apple Watch are so good that you do not have to hold your wrist to your mouth to speak to it when you're on the phone. I promise you, if you go on making spaghetti or doing whatever you're doing and you ask whoever you're talking to on that call how you sound, they're going to tell you that you sound perfect. So I wanted to share that because I think that that's kind of a powerful thing to know. The third thing is the third sort of set of features with Apple Watch is really, in my opinion, all about health. And it's all about uh, exercise and some of the things that we can utilize because these devices are physically attached or physically talking to our skin. They're monitoring heart rate. They're actually even monitoring the amount of um, oxygen in our blood. It's got all these wonderful things happening for it. All these things are being tracked as we go. So uh, if you are brand new to Apple Watch, I want to talk just for a moment about the anatomy of any given Apple Watch. The watch face that you're looking at today is the watch face of an Apple Ultra 2. This is Apple's most durable watch. It's a little bit thicker 
than the others. Um, it's a little bit sturdier. It's got this big sort of stainless steel frame. Uh, it's not easy to break these as it is with some of the other watches. And it's the only watch that actually does have a button on the left-hand side. The other ones do not. Every other watch out there does have two buttons, however, and they are on the top right and on the bottom right. And for everyone's watch out there that isn't an Apple Watch Ultra, you're going to notice that that bottom button is very flush with the casing. It's almost like hard to see if it's even there. Now, this season, this fall, so every fall, Apple comes out with new operating systems for all of their devices. They have five operating systems, soon to be six. They have an operating system for the iPhone, one for the iPad, one for the Mac computers, one for Apple TV, and also one for the Apple Watch. But this uh, this coming year in 2024, they're going to release these these Vision, um, you know, sort of Oculus um, uh, goggles that are coming out. They're going to have a different operating system for that. But when they come out with these new operating systems, a lot of the times they are changing many things. And this year, going from Watch OS 9 to what we now have, which is Watch OS 10 we had a couple of really major changes. The biggest change for those of us that have been using an Apple Watch is a uh, control center. So on the previous generation watch, I would swipe up from the bottom and I would get to something called the control center. Now, wait a second, we talked about control center today. When I swipe down from the top right on my phone, I get access to these kind of cool controls. Well, on this Apple Watch, when I click on it to, to wake it up, if I now click on this bottom button once, I'm going to be brought to the control center of Apple Watch. And now as I scroll down, I can see that there's a bunch of little icons here that are pretty cool and are very helpful. This allows me to turn the cellular on or off. In fact, let me get something that's a little bit easier to point. Um, this allows me to turn the cellular on and off. This, of course, is Wi-Fi. This one right here is really powerful because it allows me to ping my iPhone. And what's really neat about this latest version of this feature is that when I do that, if I'm not sure where my iPhone is, but I am wearing my watch, when I click on that button, it's going to start to make my iPhone make some noise. But it's also now going to count down the number of feet away from my phone that I am. This is really cool because... I'm not totally clear on which direction. I can kind of hear it, but I don't know if it's in the golf cart or if it's in the bedroom or if it's under some couch, whatever. So that's kind of cool is that if, as I move closer or further away from my iPhone, it's going to show me the distance. This next one brings up a topic. This is the icon that we use. Oh, did my screen freeze? Hold on. This next one right here is the icon that we use for something called AirPlay. Now, AirPlay is a technology that Apple pioneered that allows me to take music and push it to a nearby speaker. And one thing that I love to let people know about Apple Watch that they may not have realized is that the Apple Watch itself does have a hard drive inside of it that's capable of holding content. So, what that means for all of you that enjoy a nice, beautiful morning walk out there, um, I'm envious of you because I don't typically get that, um, is that you can actually load either podcasts or audiobooks or music onto your physical phone. And then with Apple's AirPods, you can leave your phone physically at home and you can enjoy content from the watch to your AirPods and have a phone-free walk around uh, your neighborhood um, without having it to carry around phone. This is really great for those of us that are joggers and you don't want to like strap it onto your arm or something. You can put your your playlist of your favorite, you know, running or gym music into the actual Apple Watch and wirelessly send that to your wireless um, AirPods. And you can just leave the phone in your gym bag or whatever you want to do back at the house as you go for a run or you know, motor around the gym. So that's a very powerful thing. And so this allows me to really quickly and easily kind of control um, what the sound output from this device is gonna be. Now, obviously the 100% shows me the battery charge. So that's nice to have a, 
a quick um, reference as to exactly how much um, battery my device has left. This next one is basically telling me I don't want to receive any uh, audio notifications. I want to turn this off because I don't want my watch to beep. So if that's the case, why do I have these little theater masks? What's that one all about? Well, that one is very powerful because if you go to a movie and you're wearing an Apple watch and maybe you're not wearing a jacket and you don't have anything covering your watch, if you get a text message or if someone calls you or whatever, your watch face is going to light up and it's going to disturb everybody around you and it's going to make all this light. It's almost like pulling out a cell phone in the movie theater. It's very annoying. So if you turn that on, just make sure that you're good about turning it back off when you leave the theater. This is a really you know, common problem. If you'll turn on notifications to go into a movie, you have to be kind of good about it. So sometimes we'll just turn the watch off completely uh, to avoid that from happening. The next one is an extremely powerful function, especially for couples or for people on your team. And that is the walkie talkie app. Yes, I said it. This app allows you to use a walkie talkie like feature between this physical watch and a friend or a family. So if, you, um, if you're interested in this, you're gonna first go to the, um, the walkie talkie app. So uh, we've been talking about control center, which is a single tap on the bottom button in watch OS 10. It's a swipe up from the bottom if you're on watch OS 9. And so if I'm on uh, watch OS 10 or nine, if I tap on the top button, which is this one that has the digital crown on it, if I tap on that, that's gonna bring me to my list of apps. And if I go all the way to the bottom, there's gonna be a walkie talkie app. And at the top of this, of course I need to have the service turned on. I always recommend to everyone, just leave it on all day long. And if I wanna add a friend, I would just click on plus. I then have to navigate through a lot of my contacts to find that person. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit clumsy the first time you do it, but once you get them added, it's very powerful. And, uh, In my case, I'm going to tap on Gerilyn. She she runs things at our company, iCreative. And it went out to see if she's actually available. And she is available because now I am seeing this little yellow button. And so all I need to do right now is tap and hold on this button. And I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to hear this, but I'm going to call Gerilyn right now. Hey there, are you hearing this okay? That's so awesome. How far away are you right now? Awesome. Are you going to go out and get some lunch soon? Okay, I'm gonna stop bothering you. Go enjoy yourself. I'll see you in a little while. So a really great thing is to have this within the home. If your husband and wife and you know one of you is always on one side of the house and you find yourself screaming the other side constantly, you can use this feature really quickly and easily. And even if the person has already left the house, they're on their way to the grocery store, they're you know, two, two miles down the road, you can use this feature to say, hey, I forgot to tell you, we're totally out of blueberries, can you get us some more? And this can be just a really quick way. Yes, of course you could call them or you could text them, but this is another way that you can really stay um, active and communicating. Another kind of silly example that we do use is you know, our company does audio video. And so sometimes our guys are crawling in crazy crawl spaces and under in attics and you know doing all this this wild stuff and sometimes they don't want to pull out their phone and dial a phone call to do something they can literally just tap and hold and say hey i i've i've pulled the cable can you see it from where you are or, or how far you know that's kind of thing and so there's there's tons of little weird applications that this can be used for and i thought that i would take a second to point that out 
So the easiest way to navigate the Apple Watch is to simply say that there's a, a bottom right button that a single tap is going to take you to the control center. The top right button is a button that you can press, but it's also a dial that you can turn. And if I tap on it once, now I can either click on the wheel to make this advance through all my apps, or I can use the touch screen, which by the way is inertial. So if I do it harder, it'll go faster. And this is gonna allow me to cruise through all the apps that are offered on Apple Watch. Now, one thing that I think is kind of handy is that there's two ways that you can view all of the apps on an Apple Watch. This is the list view, but if I scroll to the bottom of the very, uh, the very bottom of the list, I'm gonna see this little kind of a honeycomb looking icon at the bottom. If and I tap on that once, it changes the apps to this view, which might be kind of handy because I can kind of see a lot of apps really quickly and easily by doing this. So if for any reason I want to toggle back and forth, I just scroll to the very bottom and now I can tap on list to switch it back to list. Now outside of the Apple Watch and its interface itself is a very important app, which is the Apple Watch app itself. This app is really important because it's got lots of settings and ways that I can customize the watch. And there's lots of information going on here. The very bottom of the screen, I only have three areas within the app. I've got my watch, which is currently lit up gold. I've got my face gallery where I can go and look at, you know, you know, other kinds of watch faces and see what other things are available. That's kind of cool. And then I can also discover you know, really neat apps. If I'm a golfer or maybe I love to go running, let's go find some other things that are that are very valuable for Apple Watch. Now, I spend almost all of my time in the Apple Watch on the My Watch section. And the My Watch section at the very top has something that says All Watches. If I tap on All Watches, I can have more than one Apple Watch. And I wanted to just mention this really quickly. Many of us might have an existing Apple Watch. They know that it's a few years old and they're planning on getting a new watch. Well, what am I supposed to do with the old one? I find that a great use of an old Apple Watch is to use it as your sleeping watch. So you can actually add a second watch um, uh, to the Apple Watch app, to this iPhone. And then what I do, uh, what I've been using my second one for is I will leave the second or older one on the watch charger at home by my bed. And when I get home at night, I'll take my, my Apple Watch Ultra off and I'll put that on the charger and I'll take the one that's on the charger off and I'll put that on and I'll sleep with that one on so that I can track my sleep. I really only use that Apple Watch to track my sleep. And that way I'm kind of constantly registering and I can see over a long period of time what kind of sleep I'm getting. So just a little quick tip that yes, you can have more than one Apple Watch set up. You may wanna have uh, like a fancier, nicer, newer one that you've got a really nice elegant band for and you're using your other one. Maybe that's the one that you use for exercising because you're gonna get it sweaty and it's gonna be in the swimming pool or maybe you swim in a lake or you swim in the ocean and you want that one to be your exercise watch. That's also another example of how or why you might have two watches. But in the Apple Watch app, I can right here at the top control not notifications. Maybe I'm getting a little bit annoyed by every single time a text message comes in, it's making a noise on the Apple Watch. And I don't really want that. Or maybe um, there's a notification that I do want. Well, all I need to do is tap on this and I can cruise through all of these settings to determine exactly how I want any of these apps to interact with my watch. I can even change the app view from the grid view to list view. The grid view is what we were sort of calling the honeycomb. Uh, on Apple Watch Ultra, I can change the action button, which is the left button. It's the only watch that has a button on the left-hand side. And I can get in and I can also add cellular. So I do wanna talk for a second about cellular and its relationship to Apple Watch. As many of you know, cellular is 
what we pay for when we have a, a cell phone with our friends from Verizon or AT&T or whoever your carrier is. It is possible nowadays to buy an Apple Watch that has cellular. So when you're purchasing a watch, make sure that you're always getting a cellular one, even if you don't think you're going to enable it on cellular. So what I mean by this is that if I was to use the example of uh, an elderly client that might be suffering from dementia, uh, bless you, by the way. Um, uh, I think Danielle just had a sneeze. She's like me. She's maybe got the cold as well. Yeah, I saw that. I said that looked like a good one. I couldn't hear it, but it looked like a good one. Um, and so um, when we when we get a watch or an iPad, by the way, that has cellular built in, we will need to call our friends from Verizon, or we can go right here on this interface on Apple Watch to enable or set up a cellular plan for this device. What that does is it allows the cellular radio built into Apple Watch to talk directly to the cell phone towers. So um, in emergency cases, this is wonderful because if my phone is in the car, and I went for a jog up the mountain and I didn't want to take my phone with me. And then I slip and fell and hurt my leg and I you know, fell off the side of the path or whatever. Um, my watch would still be able to connect as long as there was cellular capabilities. That's pretty cool. And if I get into a car wreck or something like that, that's great. If I'm in a place um, and I slip and fall and uh, you know, maybe I uh, suffer from dementia or something like that, um, the cellular capabilities are still going to to alert emergency personnel um, over cellular, even though my phone isn't within the normal 25 foot range. If I don't have cellular set up on my watch, my watch has to always maintain a connection of about 20 to 25 feet from my physical iPhone. If I have cellular built in and it's, a, it's like a five or $10 a month charge to add my watch to the cellular plan, then my watch is able to connect uh, wherever Verizon uh, has cell phone connectivity. So that proves to be very powerful in emergency situations, of course. But for more practical purposes, let's say in the case of exercising, maybe I don't want to have an iPhone on me as I go for my morning jog. So I leave my phone physically at home. Uh, in a second, I'll talk about syncing content onto the watch. And once you've put content onto Apple Watch and you choose to leave your phone at home, you go for a jog. And of course, the minute that you get out your front door, you're already out of range from the phone. And so the watch is now going to connect to cellular. If I'm two and a half miles away from my house and someone calls me on my phone that's back home, my watch will actually ring. And since I'm wearing AirPods and listening to music from my phone, I can actually answer the call and say, hey, I'm in the middle of a jog. Can I call you back in 20 minutes? Or hey, is this really important? I can you know, kind of pull over and, and do that. But this is a really nice and a powerful way to kind of free yourself up from being tethered physically to that 25 foot um, extension from an iPhone. So cellular is kind of an important thing to set up on the phone and or on the watch initially. Uh, after you get it. Um, again, you have to call the carrier and enable the cellular to the device. But I think that that's a really a great way to sort of leverage some of these emergency and uh, convenience technologies. So it's really pretty powerful stuff. Um, okay, so getting back to the watch itself, once I tap on the top button, which is the digital crown, and I log into the watch, tapping once on the top brings me to my apps. Tapping uh, and holding initiates Siri. What is the capital of Washington? Well, that wasn't very helpful. What is 2,021 meters in feet? Okay, that was pretty helpful. So I can just tap and hold on the top right hand button and I'm gonna initiate Siri and she's gonna try her best to be very helpful. So there's so much stuff to go over. I'm gonna keep uh, this a little bit short and maybe open it up to some questions. So um, if you guys have any questions about Apple Watch or just about anything else, um, 
I'm you open. Have a question in regards to locking the iPhone. Yeah. How to lock the screen. How do you lock an iPhone? Is that is that what the question was? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, going back to iPhone for a minute. So right now, my iPhone is unlocked and I've authenticated into this either by using my face or by punching in a code to get into the device. A really great tip is before you put this into your pocket, if you're a man, or before you put it into your purse, if, uh, if you're a woman, is that I'm always going to encourage you to tap once on the top right, on the on the button on the right side of the phone, which is the sleep wake button, all right here. So on the right side of the phone, this is the sleep wake button. And the minute that I do that, my phone actually locks, the screen goes black. And now you would need to know my password to get in. And so my phone is trying to unlock right now, but I'm not gonna show up my face and I'm not going to, um, put in the code. So to lock your phone, click once on the right side, and then make sure that the display is awake. And that's how you get to the lock screen. That's all there is to it. And from the lock screen, what I was demonstrating is that there's two buttons down here at the bottom, one that has the camera and one that has the flashlight. And if you hard press on either one of those, it's a quick shortcut right into those apps. Hope that answers your question. so far I don't see any other questions okay great well listen it's the holiday season and uh, I can't believe you guys have put up with me for this long with my horrible voice and coughing and everything so uh, if there aren't any more questions we'll we'll stop for today I've given us a lot of information and I hope that some of you found it useful and uh, I hope everyone has an incredible holiday season I look forward to seeing you all in 2024. Thank you. Okay, you, you guys. You sounded amazing, by the way. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Oh, I hope you feel 100% real soon. Thank you very much. You guys have a great one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Ciao. Hey, everybody. It's Jonathan Gorman from iCreative. I wanted to take a moment to thank you so much for attending this session. As always, recordings of the sessions will be available on our YouTube channel, along with many other videos. You can access all of our videos for free anytime by heading to our website at www.theicreative.com. From our homepage, there is a helpful link directly to our YouTube channel. I really enjoy doing these classes, and I hope that you learn something new from each of these Zoom sessions of ours. I also want to let you know about some of the other sessions that we have scheduled. I hope to see you in another class, and thank you again so much for joining us today.